Hello everyone, uh, we're going to go over section 10.2, polar equations and graphs. So first, let's go with the difference between the rectangular system and the polar system. So the rectangular grid, it goes in crisscross. So there's only one and only way to express a point on the rectangular coordinate system. For instance, 2 comma 3, there is only one 2 comma 3 in the whole entire plane. Now let's look at the polar grid. Now the polar grid goes around the circle. Each line is called the radial line. So you could think of it as first line is r equals to 1, radius 2, radius 3, and so forth. And the instead of x comma y, uh, when it comes to polar coordinate system, your ordered pair is going to be r comma theta. So for instance, if I have 2 comma pi over 4, so that means starting from radius positive 2, revolve positive pi over 4 unit. And then you make a dot. However, do you see that point is not unique, meaning there are multiple ways that you can express that point. So that would be the huge difference between the rectangular coordinate system and then the polar coordinate system. Now to draw the polar graphs, I'm just going to warn you ahead of time that it is such a pain in the butt. You're going to have to plot so many points in order for you to be able to draw the whole entire graph. Of course, I will show you how to graph the polar graph by hand. Um, however, on the exam, uh, what I want you to do is just use your graphing calculator to graph it out. However, um, what I would like for you to do is to, giving an equation, recognize what kind of graph that you're going to get out of it. That's pretty much all I'm going to be asking you on the exam. Let's go with the classification of polar graphs and equations. So all the stuff that you need to know are listed here. Circle, lines, cardioid, and limousine, and lemniscate, and rows. Okay, so for circle, equations of the circle are given by r equals to a, r equals plus or minus 2a sine or cosine of theta. You can easily verify that these three equations are going to be circle by converting each equation into a rectangular form. Now for the lines, equations are theta equals alpha, where alpha is the angle, r cosine of theta equals to a. That makes sense because think about it, r cosine equals to x. So x equals to, let's just say 5, that's nothing but an equation of, of a vertical line. Similarly, for r sine of theta, r sine of theta is y, so y equals to b, so pretend b is 5 or something like that, so y equals to 5 is a horizontal line. Next one is cardioid, pretty much the heart shaped. Um, the cardioid equations are given by r equals a plus or minus a sine or cosine of theta. So if the uh, both a's are the same numerical value, then it's going to be a cardioid. Now, limousin is going to be, you're going to get two types of limousins, the bean shape and the loop shape. So if you have r equals a plus or minus b sine or cosine of theta, and if b is less than a, you're, go, you're going to get the bean shaped limousin. Now, if a is less than b, you're going to get that looping limousin. I did my best to draw the cardioid and limousin, but as you see, they are a little bit wobbly. But anyways, let's go with the next one, lemniscate and rose. Now the lemniscate is the figure eight shape. And then of course, rose um, have more than uh, just two petals. You could have three petals, four petals, five, six, seven, depending on what kind of equation that you're given. So we'll see that later on. Here's the chart for the circles. So if you're given r equals to 5, uh, if we use the conversion, r is square root of x squared plus y squared. So if I square both sides, then it just becomes the equation of a circle. If you have r equals a cosine of theta, you're gonna, still going to get a circle. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see this by multiplying by r on both sides. We've done that in previous section in 10.1.
But anyways, that circle is going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Okay, and then another shifted circle is of the form r equals a sine of theta. Now, in this case, the circle is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Oh, and I forgot to mention that um, let's go back to the r equals 4 cosine of theta. Now, if that becomes negative 4 cosine of theta, you're going to get a circle, exactly the same circle that you see on the right-hand side, but you're going to have to flip that onto the uh, left-hand side of it, of the y-axis. And same thing for the um, r equals negative 6 sine of theta. So if you just graph r equals positive 6 sine of theta, you're going to have the same exact circle on top of the x-axis. Next, let's go with equations of lines. So one form is theta equals pi over 4. This is going to generate a straight line. Uh, we'll do some examples in a minute. Um, I will show you how that's going to become a line. And also, you're going to get a vertical line if you have something of the form r equals 3 secant of theta. Remember, secant of theta is 1 over cosine. So if I cross multiply by the cosine on both sides, you're going to have r times cosine of theta equals to 3. r cosine of theta is x, so you got x equals to 3. So for sure, you're going to get a vertical line. Same thing for the horizontal line. Um, r equals negative 4 cosecant of theta. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So if I rewrite that and multiply both side by sine, you're going to have r sine of theta equals to negative 4, but r sine of theta is y. So you're going to have y equals negative 4, which is an equation of a horizontal line. Now let's go with the cardioid, means heart. So if you're given r equals a plus b cosine or sine of theta, where a's and b's are the same value, Let's first go with the cosine. So here's, a, here's an example, r equals 3 plus 3 cosine of theta. In this case, a equals to b, they're both 3. So for sure, you're going to get a cardioid or heart-shaped uh, graph. So here's a little cool trick. Uh, you're, the heart is going to go out 3 plus 3, you just add a plus b on the x-axis. And then it's going to hit 3 and negative 3 on the y-axis. And graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Now, if you change the sign in the middle, meaning r equals 3 minus 3 cosine of theta, what's going to happen is that you're going to have to flip that graph on the left. Okay, so now let's go with the sign. So if you're given something of the form r equals 4 minus 4 sine of theta, again, a equals to b, and how far is the heart going to go is you just add a plus b, so it's going to go down 8 along the y-axis, and it's going to hit 4 and negative 4 on the x-axis. This is kind of a cool trick to remember. Now, if the equation is r equals 4 plus 4 sine of theta, then you're going to have to flip that graph above the x-axis. That's all you have to do. Now let's go with the equations of Limasson. The equation is of the form r equals a plus b cosine or sine of theta, but in this case, a is less than b. So here's an example. r equals 3 minus 5 cosine of theta. Now here's another cool trick. If I add a plus b, which is 3 plus 5, so that's 8, so it's gonna, the graph's going to go out to x equals to 8 on the graph, and then it's going to hit 5 minus 3, which is 2 in the loop. And graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Now let's go with another form of Limasson that's going to look like a beam. So here you're going to have r equals a plus, plus b cosine or sine of theta, where in this case a is going to be bigger than b. So here's an example, r equals 4 plus sine of theta. 
Now, how far does the bean going to go up to? It's nothing but a plus b, so in this case, 4 plus 3. So it's going to go 7 units uh, above the x-axis, so meaning y equals to 7. And then it's going to hit 4 and negative 4 on the x-axis. And then also, this, is, this one's pretty cool to know, it's going to uh, hit 1 on the negative y-axis. How do I get that? It's just a minus b. Um, but don't worry, we're going to do some examples in a minute, and we'll do this by hand. Now let's go with the equations of rows with, first let's go with the cosine. So any equations of the form r equals a cosine or sine of b times theta. Um, let's take a look at r equals to 7 cosine of 4 theta. So in this case, our b is 4. And it's, of course, 4 is even, so we're guaranteed to have 2 times b, many of petals. So in this case, 2 times 4 is 8. So for sure, you're going to have 8 petals. That's a lot. And here's the cool trick to know. If the cosine is positive, because it's positive 7 cosine, uh, for sure, you're going to start out with the positive x-axis. And since we're going to have 8 many petals, if you divide 360 by 8 or 45 degrees apart, going counterclockwise, then you're going to be able to graph the whole entire rose curve. And the length of the each petal is A, so in this case, just 7. Now let's go with when B is odd. So for an example, I have R equals negative 6 cosine of 5 theta. Now in this case, our B is 5. It's odd, so it's either we're going to have b many petals or five petals and unlike the previous one with the even b we don't multiply uh, the this b by two now since this is negative six cosine it's going to start from the negative x-axis and then if you divide 360 by five so which is 72 degrees apart going counterclockwise and you're going to able to draw the whole entire graph and the length of the each petal is going to be a, or I should say absolute value of a, which is going to be 6. Now let's take a look at rows curves with sine function. So we're going to separate this into b being even and b being odd. So let's first look at when b is even. So we're given the equation r equals 8 sine of 4 theta. Now here, b is 4 and it's even, we're guaranteed to have a 2 times b many petals. In this case, that would be 8 petals. And like again, just like before, since you're given positive 8 sign, we're going to be starting from the positive x-axis. And we're going to start off at a 22.5 degrees. How in the heck do we get? That is 90 divided by b. In this case, b was 4. And it's going to be 45 degrees apart going counterclockwise. And the length of each petal is just going to be A, which is 8. Now let's go with when B is odd. So an example, R equals negative 6 sine of 5 theta. Since B is 5, of course that's odd, we're going to have either B many petals or 5 petals. We're not going to multiply the B by 2. Now, since we're given negative 6 sine, we're going to start at 90 divided by b, just like what we just did above, which is 90 divided by 5, which is 18 degrees down from the positive x-axis. And we're going to be 72 degrees apart and going counterclockwise. And again, the length of each uh, petal is absolute value of a, in this case, 6. Now let's go with the spiral. Spiral graph is given by the equation r equals a times theta. So for example, if you have r equals 2 times theta, you, you're guaranteed to have a spiral graph. And lemniscate means figure 8. So the equations are given by r squared equals a squared cosine or sine of 2 theta. So let's look at the case when a is 4. 
So your r is going to be the square root of 16 times cosine of 2 theta. Now with the cosine graph, it's going to go horizontal across the x-axis. And the graph's going to have two petals, and the length of each petal is going to be a, which is in this case 4. Now let's take a look at lemniscate with sine involved in it. Sine function, what I mean is, if I take a equals to 7, our r is going to be square root of 49 sine of 2 theta. Now, if you're given sine function, then graph's going to go along the pi over 4 axis. And the graph has two petals, and the length of each petal is going to be a, which in this case, 7. Notice that pretty much all the polar graphs are symmetric. So it would have been kind of cool if we know if whether the graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis or the y-axis or at the origin. So here is the theorem for the test for symmetry. If you want to check the symmetry with respect to the x-axis, but our x-axis is nothing but a polar axis, what you need to do is, giving an equation, replace the theta by negative theta. And if you get the same equation back, then the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the polar axis or the x-axis. Now for the symmetry with respect to the line theta equals to pi over 2, that's same thing as the y-axis. Um, how do you check that is replaced theta by pi minus theta. And if you get the same equation back, then graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which is theta equals to pi over 2. Now, if you want to check to see whether the graph is symmetric with respect to the origin or the pole, uh, either replace r with negative r or theta by theta plus pi. And again, if you get the same equation back, then graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the origin or the pole. Finally, example time. All right, so example one, identify and graph the equation, part A, r cosine of theta equals to 4. Uh, so in this case, let me see, what was r cosine of theta? r cosine of theta is x. So what we're going to get is just x equals to 4. So that's nothing but a vertical line, x equals to 4. So if I have to graph this out. Jeez, you know what I'm trying to do. So this is 1, 2, 3, and a 4. So this is x equals to 4. Let's do another one. b theta equals negative pi over 4. Okay, so for sure this is going to be a line because of the formula that we went over earlier. But to verify that, why don't we just compose both sides with tangent? So we're going to have tan of theta equals tan of negative pi over 4. But remember the conversion of tan of theta? Tan of theta was y over x. So we have y over x equals, now tangent of negative pi, pi over 4 is negative 1. So this is the equation that we're going to get. So that implies that y equals negative x. I forgot to box my answer here. So again, this is just going to be a line. Okay, this is the best I can do. And this is y equals to negative x. Okay, let's do another basic one. Let's go with c. r cosecant of theta equals to 8. We saw that earlier that this equation is going to represent a circle. So let's take a look. So I'm going to have r times cosecant of theta is 1 over sine of theta equals to 8. Multiplying by sine of theta on both sides, then we're going to have 
r equals 8 sine of theta. Now we learned the cool trick in last section. If you want to put this in a rectangular form, trick was to multiply both sides by r. So if I do that, then this equation becomes r squared equals 8r sine of theta. But r squared is x squared plus the y squared. And then 8 times r sine of theta is y. Now let's bring the 8y on the left hand side. Then we're going to have x squared plus y squared minus 8y equals to 0. And complete the square on the y. Alright, so if I do that, here you're going to have y squared minus 8y. I'm going to leave a little room. Okay, so what goes... Oops. I'm going to divide the middle number by 2, so I'm going to have negative 4. What goes in there is negative 4 squared. So I'm going to have to add 16, but if I'm going to add 16, I better subtract by 16. So what do we got? This means we got x squared plus y minus 4 squared minus 16 equals to 0. So we have x squared plus y minus 4 squared equals to 16. Now again, as you see, this is an equation of a circle centered at 0, 4 and radius of 4. So let me just write that. Okay, so if I draw the graph, where is it again? Center at 0, 4. At 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And radius is 4. Oh my gosh, it got erased. But you know what I'm trying to do here. Okay. So from here to here is going to be 4 and is centered at 0, 4. Okay, so now let's look at an example 2. Identify and graph r equals 1 plus sine of theta. Now this is of the form r equals a plus a sine of theta. So this is going to be a cardioid. Now let me show you how the textbook does it so that you don't have to struggle with doing your homework. So what they do first is they want you to check for symmetry. So let's first go with the polar axis, which is, is it going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis? So this is polar axis. Okay, so in order to do that, what you need to do is replace your theta with negative theta into that equation. So if I do that, then here you're going to have r equals 1 plus sine of negative theta. So that implies that we're going to have 1. Now remember, sine is an odd function. So sine of, I'll write it out, sine of negative theta is negative sine of theta. So here, I'm going to get 1 minus sine of theta. And that is not the original equation. So no, it's not symmetric with respect to the x-axis. So now let's go with the y-axis. meaning the line theta equals to pi over 2 it means the same thing. So how do you check that? Is you're going to replace your theta with pi minus theta. All right, so let's check. So here you're going to have r equals 1 plus sine of pi minus theta. Okay, so now remember this formula, sine of alpha minus beta. That's sine alpha, 
cosine beta minus cosine of alpha and then sine of beta. So we're going to follow that formula. So then here what we're going to get is r equals 1 plus sine of pi cosine of theta and then minus cosine of pi and then sine of theta. Okay, so let's compute. So r equals 1 plus, now sine of pi is 0, so this whole thing is going to be 0. And then minus cosine of pi is what? Negative 1, so you're going to have negative 1 times sine of theta. So simplify, what do we get? We get r equals 1, and then what? Plus sine theta. Oh look, that's exactly the equation that uh, it's given to us. So therefore, it's uh, the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Okay, so let me box that. Now let's check for the symmetry at the origin or the pole. Okay, so how do we do that is either replace your r with a negative r or replace your theta with theta plus pi. So if you replace the r with a negative r, there is no way in heck that we're going to have r equals 1 plus sine theta. We're going to have a negative r equals 1 plus sine theta, so this is out. No. All right, now let's replace um, theta with the theta plus pi. So we're going to have 1 plus. Now we're going to have to use uh, sine of alpha plus beta formula. So this is sine theta cosine of pi plus cosine of theta and then sine of pi. So which gives r equals 1, and then cosine of pi is negative 1, so you're going to have plus sine of theta, and then negative 1, and then sine of pi is 0, so that's pretty much it. So we're going to have r equals 1 minus sine of theta, that is not our original equation, so no. So basically the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis only. Okay, so let's get ready to graph. Now, if the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which will be, let me just draw this out, it's going to be symmetric with respect to this line. Do you see that all I need to know is to um, graph the, either the right-hand side or the left-hand side of that vertical line? So with that said, what your textbook does is to compute the theta value starting from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so let's just do this. We got theta and r equals 1 plus sine of theta and only check, that says check, between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, so I'm just going to drop down starting from negative pi over 2. Maybe negative pi over 3, negative pi over 6, 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Alright, so let's compute. So our r is going to be 1 plus sine of negative pi over 2. That will be negative 1. So this is going to be 0. So we're going to have to plot when r is 0, you're going to go negative pi over 2 units. And then let's go with the negative pi over 3. So you're going to have r equals 1 plus sine of negative pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. So this is approximately 0 0.13. Now negative pi over 6, we're going to have 1 plus sine of negative pi over 6 is negative 1 half. 
So here you're going to have one half. And when theta is zero, you're just going to have one plus zero, which is one. And pi over six, sine of pi over six is one half. So you're going to have 3 over 2, 1.5. And at pi over 3, so this is going to be 1.87 approximately. And then when uh, theta equals to pi over 2, uh, what is it? Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So you're going to get 2. Okay, so now let's get ready to graph this by hand. Now, since the radius is going to go up to 2, and uh, this graph grid is kind of small, so every third increment, I'm going to call that as a radius of 1. So, let me see, 1, 2, 3. So, this circle right here, pretend that this circle here is going to be radius 1. And then this line here, it's going to be radius of 2. So I hope you can see this all right. See, it's already pain in the butt. We haven't even started graphing yet. All right, so pretend that that's a radial line of radius of 2. Okay, I think we're ready, so let's do this. So the first one is radius is 0 when theta is pi over 2, so that's nothing but a dead center. So this point right here is 0, comma, negative pi over 2. Now the next one is we're going to start out with a radius of positive 0 0.13. So maybe 0 0.13 would be maybe right here. And from here, we're going to revolve negative pi over 3 units. So negative 60 degrees. So that would be maybe this point right here. Now let's go with the next one. Radius is one half. And then we're gonna go negative pi over six units. So that will be right here. And the next one, r is one when theta is zero. So that one was not too bad. Let me just erase my little mark here. Oh, doesn't erase or what? Okay, all right, so now who's next? R is positive 1.5, and we're going to go pi over 6 units. That'll be right here. And the next one is radius is 1.87, so maybe starting from here, we're going to go pi over 3. Pi over 3, where are you? There you go. All right, and then the last one is radius is going to be 2 at pi over 2. So if I connect the dots carefully, that's not too bad. So this is the graph that, we, that we're going to get. And the, since it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis, all you have to do is draw the same shape on the left-hand side of the y-axis, which I hate doing. But let me try this. Okay, so maybe it's here. And then, oh my gosh. Here? Does that look right? Or is it one more up? I think it's one more up. But you get the idea. You know what to do. All right. Gosh. All right. Now what? I'm just going to go dip down to here now. I'm cheating. And then I'm just going to connect the dots. Try to draw the same shape. Oh, my gosh. That is the ugliest cardioid. But pretend that is a cardioid. You see how pain in the butt that is? So these problems like that. Uh, feel free to use your graphing calculator, but please recognize that if you're given r equals 1 plus sine of theta, it is going to be a cardioid. Now, if you want to check to see if your graph is correct, 
Remember we talked about if you're given R equals A plus A sine theta, actually it was A plus B sine theta when A equals to B, the heart is going to go out to A plus B, which in, in this case it's A plus A, which is 1 plus 1 equals to 2 on the y-axis, and then hits 1 and negative 1, which is A value, positive and negative A, a value on the x-axis. So to check, 2 is here, so this will be, heart's going to go out that far, and then it's going to hit 1 and negative 1 on the x-axis. And if you already know that equation is going to be a cardioid, maybe you can only compute um, the values for pi over 6 and then maybe pi over 3. And you know that it's going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis, so you could just draw the same picture on the left. I mean, I will uh, choose negative pi over 6 and negative pi over 3 as well just in case, but that's one way to check. So at pi over 6, I think it was 1.5, and at pi over 2, it was 0, and at negative pi over 6, it was 0.5, I want to say, so it was maybe right here. So you kind of got the idea of how the graph's going to go. And uh, pi over 3 was close to 2, right? So I think it was like right here. So you got the idea. And then have fun drawing the other side. I don't even want to try it. It's going to be horrible. Oh, I'm just going to rough sketch, rough sketch, rough sketch. Just like that. Oh, that is so off. Is that better? Anyways, that's my graph. Let's take a look at another example. Example 3, r equals 4 minus 2 cosine theta. So first, what I would like for you to do is to figure it out to what kind of figure that it's going to be. Now in this case, A is going to be bigger than B, so as you've guessed, it's going to be a limousine with no inner loop, which means that you're going to get a bean-shaped figure. Alright, so keep that in mind. And let's do how the textbook does it. So first, what they want you to do is check for symmetry. So let's go with the x-axis, which is same thing as polar axis. Okay, so in order to do that, what we have to do is replace the theta with negative theta, and then we just compute it. So here we're going to have r equals 4 minus 2 cosine of negative theta. But again, cosine is an even function, so we're going to get 4 minus 2. And cosine of negative theta just becomes cosine of theta. So in this case, yes, it is going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. So let's just box that. Now check for, is it symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which is theta equals to pi over 2? So to do that, replace the theta with pi minus theta, and you just compute. Okay, so this means 2 times cosine of alpha minus beta is cosine, cosine, and then plus sine of pi, and then sine. So 
So which is 4 minus 2 times cosine of pi is negative 1. So you're going to have oops, negative cosine of theta. And then sine of pi is 0. So this is going to become 0. So you have r equals 4 plus 2 cosine of theta. So that is not the original equation. So it is not going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Now let's go with the origin. Oh, let me just write what line means y-axis. All right, so the old, old origin means pole. Okay, so what do we do? So we're going to have to replace either r. It's going to go to negative r, but do you see that that's not going to work? All right, and then or theta is going to go to theta plus pi. You just replace your theta with theta, uh, theta plus pi. So let's do this. So r equals 4 minus 2 cosine of, that's a cosine, theta plus pi. So this is 4 minus 2. And cosine of theta plus pi is cosine cosine minus sine sine. Okay, so this means that we're going to have r equals 4 minus 2. Again, cosine of pi is negative 1, so you're going to have negative cosine of theta, and sine of pi is 0. Well, I should put minus 0. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be 0 anyways. But So looks like we're going to get 4 plus 2 cosine of theta, so it is not going to be symmetric at the origin. Now, you already know that graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. So all we need to do is probably compute um, the angles from 0 to pi. I think that should be enough. So let's do it. Oh, before we do this, I, I'm sorry. Um, remember the little cool trick, which is that if you're given r equals 4 minus 2 cosine of theta, if you add those two, 4 plus 2, that's how high uh, the graph's going to go along the x-axis. But the thing is, cosine's negative. So you're going to have to flip that graph. So that means that uh, the beam is going to go down 6 units towards the x-axis. Meaning, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 6. It's going to go out to here. So this will be the end point of your beam. And also, we went over that um, it's going to go up and down 4 units, which is the value of A. So if I do that, then let me see. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the, the graph must um, touch those points. Anyway, so let's make the chart. Okay, so I'm just going to write it as check 0, 2, pi. Okay, so now let's start plugging in some points. So let's start from 0, maybe pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 2. We already know um, that's going to be 4. And then 2 pi over 3. 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6, and then pi, but at pi you already know that the value is going to be 6. So let me just write that out. So this, this value is going to be 6 no matter what. That's the end of the beam. And then at pi over 2, it's going to be 4. Okay, so let's start. So when theta is 0, you're going to have 4 minus 2 times cosine of 0 is 1. So this is going to be 2. Pi over 6, r is 4 minus 2 times root 3 over 2. Uh, I need a calculator for that. That's approximately 2.3. And up pi over 4. Oh, another calculator. 
2.6, pi over 2 is done, 2 pi over 3, Now notice that cosine value is going to be negative about 2 pi over 3, so this is going to be negative a half. So this is going to be 5. All right, now 3 pi over 4. And again, cosine is going to be negative about 3 pi over 4, so you're going to have negative wrap 2 over 2. So this is going to be 5.4. And one more, 5 pi over 6. Oops. What is that? Negative root 3 over 2. So this is going to be approximately 5.7. Phew. Okay, now let's plot the point. So the first one is one, when r equals to positive 2, theta value is going to be 0. So that will be right here. So this will be the starting of the bean. All right, and then the next one at a pi over six, it's gonna be approximately 2.3. So maybe just getting a little bit bigger, that's all. And pi over four, it's going to be 2.6. Okay, and then at pi over two, it's gonna be four. And the, what's the next one? Two pi over three. It's going to be 5, where is 2 pi over 3? Okay. okay, and 3 pi over 4, it's going to go a little bit outward. And then 5 pi over 6, 5.7. Oh, my gosh. All right, you get the idea. You already know what the picture is going to look like, so... Just connect those dots. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's the, that's the half of it. And all you have to do is try to draw the, pretty much the same picture down below. So, gosh, I, I'm not a big fan of drawing as you know. Uh, I think that's good enough. All right, to me, this is just beautiful. This is perfect. So, but you got the idea of how to graph it by now, I hope. Let's do another one. r equals 1 plus 2 sine of theta. So let's just recognize what kind of graph that we're going to get. So this is of the form r equals a plus b sine of theta. And in this case, our b is going to be greater than a. So can you guess what figure that is? Yes, that's Limousin with the inner loop. And I absolutely hate drawing Limousin with the inner loops. I'm just warning you ahead of time that I might freak out. But anyways. All right, so let's keep this in mind. Now, if we apply that trick that we um, went over earlier, this limousine is going to go out a plus b, which is 1 plus 2, which is 3. It's going to go 3 units on the positive y-axis because you're given positive sine theta. And then it's going to go plus or minus a, which is plus or minus 1 on the x-axis. All right, so let's um, get started on the symmetry. First, let's check is it going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis or the polar axis? Same thing. Okay, how do we do that? We're going to have to replace our theta with negative theta and we just compute. So we're going to have r equals 1 plus 2 sine of negative theta. Oh, this is so not going to be the original 
equation because sine of uh, sine function is odd so sine of negative theta becomes negative sine of theta so here what we're going to get is 1 minus 2 sine of theta so in this case no it's not going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis so now let's go with the y-axis which is the line or the y-axis or <laughs> theta equals pi over 2 however you want to call it is okay all right so how do we do that we're gonna have to replace our theta with pi minus theta all right so let's check So it looks like we're going to have to use sine of alpha minus beta formula. So this is going to be 1 plus 2. We're going to have sine of pi, cosine of theta, minus cosine of pi, and then sine of theta. Okay, so, oops. Okay, sine of pi is 0, and then cosine of pi is negative 1, so you're going to have negative 1 and then sine of theta. So here you're going to have 1 plus 2, and that's just going to give us a positive sine of theta. So this is the original equation, so therefore the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So I'll keep that in mind. Now to check to see if it's going to be symmetric at the pole or the origin, do you see that we don't have to really compute that because you already know that this is going to be a limit song with the inner loop. So there is no way that the graph is going to be symmetric at the origin. But just in case, if you wanted to see how to prove that, you're going to replace r with a negative r, which is certainly not going to work in this case, or theta, replace the theta with theta plus pi. Okay, so... Now we're going to have to use sine of alpha plus beta, so you're going to have... Can you see that this is already not going to be symmetric at the pole? But anyway, so here we go. Uh, cosine of pi is negative 1, so here we're going to have negative sine of theta. Sine of pi is 0. So again, as we expected, this is going to be 1 minus 2 sine of theta. So this is not going to be symmetric at the origin. All right, so now you already know that this is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Um, let's compute from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. I think that should be okay. Okay, I'm just going to write check. I think this is enough. So we already know that uh, the graph's gonna go up three on the positive y-axis, and then it's going to touch plus or minus one on the x-axis. So let me just plot those points. So this is uh, y equals to three, and plus or minus one on the x-axis. So you're gonna have to graph better go through this point and then this point. All right, so keep that in mind. So let's compute. So let's start it with uh, negative pi over 2. So you're going to have r equals 1 plus 2 sine of negative pi over 2 is what, negative 1? So this is going to be negative 1. And then uh, negative pi over 3, negative root 3 over 2. 
calculator. Negative 0.7. And then um, negative pi over 6. So it's going to be 0. And sine of 0 is 0. So this is going to be 1, as we expected. We already plotted that point already. And at a pi over 6, so this is what, 2? Pi over 3. Oh, goodness. Calculator. Approximately 2.7. And then at pi over 2, you already know that it's going to go to 3. Okay, so let's uh, try to jot these points. Let's go with the first one. When r equals to negative one, theta is negative pi over two. So think of it in this way, starting from r equals to negative one, which will be right here, you're gonna have to revolve negative pi over two units from that point. So that will be uh, clockwise. So that will be this point right here. So this is negative one comma, um, negative pi over two. So it looks like this is gonna be the tip of the loop. Okay, so now let's go with the next one. R equals negative 0.7 and theta is negative pi over three. So starting from negative 0.7, maybe it's like right here, if you can see that. And we're gonna go um, 60 degrees towards the negative side, so that will be Maybe right here. Okay, now the next one is uh, radius is zero at theta negative pi over six. That's nothing but the dead center. Next one is r equals to one, theta is zero. That's already been plotted. And the next one is starting from radius positive two, go pi over six units above. So that will be this point. And then the next one is r equals to 2.7 you're gonna go pi over three units from there, positive pi over three units, so maybe it's just right there, and then at pi over two, we're gonna have three. All right, so um, let's try to draw the limousine. So I'm just gonna start connecting these dots. So you already know that it's gonna be a limousine, and the top of the inner loop is at, uh, where is that? This point right here. So. It's gonna look something like this. Oh my gosh, I... Oh goodness. And then you know for sure that it's gonna have to go through one. Oh my gosh. Maybe like right here. And then... <sighs> get it yes actually that's not too bad all right so here's my limousine with the inner loop let's just do one more and then I'll show you how you can graph these in your graphing calculator but let's go with r equals 4 sine of 5 theta so this is of the form r equals a sine of b theta Check it out and see what kind of graph this is going to be. Is your answer, uh, this is going to be a rose with five petals. So let me just write that out. Okay, now let's keep that in mind. And also we know that this is gonna be 90 over five which, what is that? 18 degrees? So the graph is gonna start from 18 degrees since the sine on the sine function is positive. It's gonna start at 18 degrees up from the positive x-axis. And to determine how far apart each petals are, 
all you have to do is divide 360 by 5. So this is going to be in degree measure, by the way. What is that? 72 degrees apart. Okay, so this means that each petal is. And the length of each petal is the value of A. So in this case, what is the A for? All right, so we have additional information for us to graph this rows. Now let's check for symmetry. All right, so let's go with the polar axis or the x-axis. So remember what to do. You're going to have to replace your theta with negative theta. So this is not going to work out. I don't know if you can see that already. So this is r equals 4 sine of negative 5 theta. All right, but the thing is, sine is an odd function. So that implies that r equals negative 4 sine of 5 theta, which is not the original equation. So it's not going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. Now let's check, is it going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which is the line? All right, so to do that, you're going to have to replace the theta with pi minus theta. Be careful here, this is 5 times the theta, so if you're going to replace that theta, you better have a parentheses here and then pi minus theta, just like that. Alright, so this is 4 times sine of 5 pi minus 5 theta. So again, we're going to have to use sine of alpha minus beta function. So let's compute sine of 5 pi, that's 0. So you're going to have minus. Cosine of 5 pi is negative 1. So you're going to have negative 1 and then sine of 5 theta. So what do we get? 4 times, and that's going to become a positive value. So you're going to have 4 sine of 5 theta, which is the original function or equation, I should say. So therefore, the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the line or the y-axis, theta equals to pi over 2. Lastly, let's check at the origin. So if I replace r with negative r, there's no way that our equation is going to be the same. So let's just skip that and replace our theta with theta plus pi. I can already see that this is not going to work, but let's just do this. So here you're going to have r equals 4 sine of 5 theta plus pi. So it looks like we're going to have to use sine of alpha plus beta. Okay, so that's 4 times uh, sine of 5 theta times cosine of 5 pi. Cosine of 5 pi is what? Negative 1? Oops. And then sine of 5 pi is going to be 0. So I'm just going to put 0. So it looks like we're going to have 4, well, negative 4 sine of 5 theta. So it is not going to be symmetric at the pole or the origin. 
Now, since the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the line, so how about we just check again negative pi over 2 to pi over 2? So let's do this. Okay, so let me just write, check. All right, so let's start from negative pi over 2, negative pi over 3, uh, negative pi over 6, uh, 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2. Oh, what did I write for? Okay, so now let's start computing. When theta is negative pi over 2, we're going to have to compute uh, 4 times whoops, sin, well, 4 times sine of negative 5 pi over 2, which is negative 1. So I'm going to have negative 4. And when theta equals negative pi over 3, you're going to have to compute 4 times sine of negative 5 pi over 3. That will be what? Root 3 over 2. Oh, calculator. So 2 times root 3, 3.5. Let's just call it 3.5. And then when theta equals negative pi over 6, you're going to have to compute sine of negative 5 pi over 6. That will be negative 1 half. So this is negative 2. And here you're going to have 4 times sine of 0 is 0. So we're going to have 0, 0. Now let's go with pi over 6. So here, what do we get? Sine of 5 pi over 6, which is 1 half. And pi over 3. Five pi over three, so this is going to be a negative root three over two. Yeah, calculator. Negative three point five. All right, and at pi over two, um, five pi over two, so it's going to be one. So it's four. Okay, so let's start from r equals to negative 4, you're going to have to revolve negative pi over 2 units. So starting from negative 4, pi, uh, negative pi over 2 units, you're going to be right here. Next one is 3.5 comma negative pi over 3. So starting from positive 3.5, we're going to go uh, negative pi over 3 units. So that will be this point right here. Next one is starting from negative 2, we're going to go negative pi over 6, so that will be right here, 0, 0, 2 comma pi over 6, and negative 3.5 uh, comma pi over 3, so that will be here, and the last one uh, starting from uh, 4, positive 4, you're going to have to go pi over 2 units, so we already got that point. So let's see if, um, if these are enough information for us to graph. So let me just look at, it's going to start 18 degrees up from the positive x-axis, so that means that's 15, means that the tip of the petal the length is going to be 4, it's going to be at 18 degrees. So this point right here is 18 degrees. All right, so it looks like, oh my goodness, it's going to be a skinny petal. That's going to be our first petal. All right, now since they're 72 degrees apart, if I go from 18 plus 72, that will be at 90 degrees, which makes sense. So from here, we're going to draw the similar petal. Here's 
here's the second one and let me just write it as 90 degrees now if I add 72 degrees to that next next stop is 162 so maybe it's right here it's gonna be the uh, the, the top of the petal All right, now the next one, if I add 72 degrees more to 162, our next stop is 234. Just gonna pretend this is 234. So it's gonna look now add 72 to 234, that's 306. And then it must be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. I'm going to do the best I can to draw this. It is not the best picture, but you get the idea. So here's the graph of r equals 4 sine of 5 theta. So now let me just show you how to graph um, the polar equations by using your graphing calculator. So again, um, I am holding my iPad with my right hand and I'm going to be typing blind, blindly with my left finger. So please be patient with me on this. So first, turn on the calculator and let's go to mode. So right now you should be in radium mode. Now, do you see that you're, you should be at a function mode usually? So you want to graph polar, so scroll to pole and then hit enter and then go to y equals. Where is y equals? All right, so you should see that if you uh, hit enter and y equals. Now here, this is the equation of r equals something. So if we want to draw r equals 4 sine of 5 theta, and then you put 5. Now if you want to uh, type in theta, do you see this variable button right here? So if you hit this, it will automatically give you a theta. And then close the parentheses, and I'm just going to hit graph. All right, so that's the graph that we get. Now, um, if we want to change the setting, go to zoom. And if you want to see this in standard meaning, x and y is going to be from negative 10 to 10. Where is that standard? So zoom 6. So that will be from uh, negative 10 to 10. But this doesn't look all that great, so I'm going to go zoom 0 zoom fit so it's going to fit on your calculator if you graph this all right now it looks kind of squashed down right it that's because your calculator uh, screen is a rectangle not a square so you might want to square the screen to see the actual graph so in order to do that go to zoom and five square so hit enter and that should be the exact graph that you should get. We just, we say that we just square the screen. If you have any questions, please let me know.